Hello there friends and welcome. Today I want to release an updated version of my Scald guide, this time more focused on mercenaries. As with the release of the Enhanced Edition, I received a lot of requests for this. It is true that I always use calls for pretty much all of my party, because they can truly provide you with the ultimate support, especially for melee characters and pets. They have amazing spellcasting support from level 1 to level 6 spells, with many amazing arcane buffs, including the ever so useful haste and even loads of bonus feats, so they can truly do everything. Don't mistake a Scald for just a support character, because the reality is, as far as your supporting side, you do it outside of battle. During actual battle, you just attack the enemies to victory, so it is also very fun to play as, or control as a mercenary. Now, before getting into the build, let's check out all the bonuses just having a Scald is giving to our entire party. First, when it comes to attack rolls, we have plus 6 competence from lethal stance, plus 3 from inspired rage, and yet another plus 2 from gear that boosts rage bonuses. So that's a total of plus 11 to party-wide AB. Second, claw attacks to my pets, which almost doubles their attacks per round, from lesser beast totem. Third, a massive boost of plus 6 stacking natural armor. When I say stacking, it is because it stacks with, let's say, bark skin and also size boost like legendary proportions, from normal beast totem. An extra bite attack to every single party member from animal fury. An extra critical multiplier from lethal accuracy. And last but not least, the pounce ability, which lets any character charge and immediately unleash their full attacks for lightning fast hits. Once again, all of these are applied at once My by just activating absolute. your Skull's Inspired Rage ability, which hits this massive orange circle around him. So you always hit your whole party unless you have bows. To put it simply, Skulls are extremely stacked and all of these bonuses cannot be found anywhere else, at least not for your entire party with complete ease of use. So without further ado, let us get into our updated Scald build. As far as archetypes, honestly, the normal Scald is still the best to me. I suppose there is something to be said about Herald of the Horn, because the only thing you lose is Lore Master, although I do kinda enjoy Lore Master for the ability to take 10 on knowledge and lore checks, which pretty much ensures you're always past them all, without being bothered by RNG. It's just that the Horn Call and the Blast abilities, I don't think they are particularly useful. I'd rather just attack with my Skull during battle. As far as Court Poet, well, your Rage Song is actually a Contemplation Song, which increases the intelligence and charisma of your party members instead of attack rolls. It's kinda niche, because the reality is I don't think most parties will be filled to the brim with spellcasters, at least not of the actual offensive spellcasting variety, usually for buffings and so on, but it's always a possibility if you want a party filled with DC casters, I suppose. So the normal skull did is for me. For race, because skulls have so many bonus feats, we have four of them, you can actually go with any race you prefer. As always, I do like humans because of the extra feat at early levels, which I think matters a lot for early game progression, especially if you are on hard or unfair. For background, street urchin and pickpocket as usual. For the bonus initiative, for ability points, strength is actually the most important one for you. You can leave it at either 17 or 19. I think 17 is a safer pick because you don't have to dump your other stats as much. 12 dexterity, 14 constitution, 14 charisma, you actually don't need high charisma as a scald. It's only to enable your spells. 16 is enough and we can get that later on through other boosts. Then I would dump wisdom and increase intelligence to 12 for an extra skill point, as scalds can get a lot of skills especially as a human scald. However, as I said, you can also start with a little lower constitution, since we are a rich character, you won't really be in danger. Then leave strength at 19 at character creation. It's up to you what you prefer. As far as skill points, I would really consider going with all of the knowledge and lore skills, as this is something scalds and bards excel at because of their bardic knowledge special ability, which always grants them a bonus to all the knowledge and lore checks equal to half your class level, so a plus 10 at max level. Combine this with lore master and your scald can always make any knowledge and lore check in the game. The last point that you'll gain on some levels I would leave it for use magic device, so you can cast divine scrolls to truly provide all the support possible. I don't think persuasion is needed because I have other characters for it like Darren or Amber. For level 1 feats, 
Lingering performance is always a must-have for any Scald. This feat pretty much doubles and triples your Scald song uses by letting your Scald rage continue to linger for two rounds after you stop performing. For a second feat, this will depend if you are on unfair or below that. For unfair, I'd rather start with improved initiative here to catch enemies flat-footed for way lower AC. For hard and below, since enemies don't have as high armor class, I'd rather go with power attack. The other one you'll get at around level 9. Since we are a two-handed character, power attack helps a lot when it comes to increasing our damage. Then for a free meta magic feat, extend spell to increase the duration of some of your buffs when needed, especially haste, which also gives you more casts of it. Skulls are spontaneous casters, just like sorcerers, so they can always cast any spell they have. Anyways, I'll guide you through the best ones. For the early levels, definitely Grease for crowd control, even if you don't have high charisma, and then Cure Light Wounds for some healing on demand. Deity choice is up to you, as I said this character is more of a mercenary type of build, but if you plan on having it for your main character, well then choose the deity that fits your Mythic Path alignment. I always go with Trickster for Scald, so someone like Hayden can work just fine, and then you would pick Chaotic Good here. I prefer good aligned skulls because of their decent charisma when combined with the Bestow Grace Paladin spell to increase their saving throws. For level 2, Combat Trick, Exotic Weapon Proficiency, and then for Shard. For Shards are the best rich weapon in the game because of their super high critical range. And since they are rich weapons, they do allow our skull to attack from far away as she will provide him safety regardless of his armor class, which can be then further combined with size spells like Enlarge Person and Legendary Proportions. Then you might as well pick Remove Fear here. At level 3, we finally get our super powerful Rage powers. Because I like my characters to have as much power as early in the game as possible for very fun and smooth game progression, I recommend you get two Rage powers just at level 3 because they do make a big difference. The way to do that is to get the extra Rage power feat and then pick Lethal Stance. Lethal Stance will highly increase the attack bonus of all your party members. With melee weapons or thrown weapons like throwing axes, it does not affect the bows, unfortunately. And then you have two choices. If you have, at the very least, two pets that can trip the enemy, most importantly the pets that only have a single attack at level 1, such as the dog, the wolf, the boar and the triceratops, the lizard as well, you should really consider picking Lesser Beast Totem here, because this will grant all of these pets 2 claw attacks per round, which means even as early as level 3, they'll already have 3 entire attacks. On the other hand, if you don't have any pets, then you might prefer to go with Animal Fury earlier, because it gives every character, pets included, an extra bite attack per round. The more attacks you have, well, usually the better for you. Regardless of what you pick here, we'll be getting the other one soon enough at around level 6. Because I usually have two pets, I'll be going with Lesser Beast Totem. And then Unbreakable Heart to remove confusion on demand. At level 4, increase strength, which is also what you should increase on all of the other levels. For your first level 2 spells, Heroism is a must-have, very long duration, and you get the spell even earlier than Wizards at level 4 instead of level 5. It can truly make a big difference early game. And then Mirror Image, which will highly help our Scald's defenses. Glitter Dust is something you can pick as well, but honestly, chances are you'll just be buffing everyone you can with Heroism at the early levels. For level 5, Extra Rage Power and then Animal Fury, or Lesser Beast Totem depending on what you picked at 3, plus the Blur Spell, another amazing low level buff. At level 6, Beast Totem, which enhances the armor class of all our party members by a stacking boost to natural AC. It really is amazing when it comes to me maxing AC. And then the Sense Vital Spell. This will take a while to get really good, usually at around level 9 to level 12, but we'll have it in time for that to add sneak attack damage to your Scald for free. Level 7 is huge for any Scald. You'll get a lot of nice stuff here as you're about to see. First, we want Outflank, of course, especially because our weapon is super high critical range, a full shard. And then Combat Trick, Combat Reflexes, just in time for Outflank to get started on our attacks of opportunity. You can pick any spell for level 1 here, it doesn't really matter. And at last we have our level 3 spells, amazing for us called because we get to pick both Good Hope and Haste. Good Hope alone is one of the best buffs in the whole game, and only Skulls and Bards have access to it. It basically has the bonus of heroism, except party-wide, so very efficient. Plus, it also enhances your damage rolls by a plus 2 morale. And as far as haste, well, it's haste, nothing else needs to be said.
For level 8 peak displacement, for your level 9 feat, either improved initiative or power attack depending on what you picked before at level 1. And then deadly accuracy, mostly so we can qualify for lethal accuracy way later on. But this can also help a bit when it comes to confirming your critical hits. Nice for high AC enemies. Then go for remove curse, which is great for any spontaneous caster. For more level 2 spells you might as well pick rage which does stack with Scald Rage, by the way. For your first level 4 spells, Ecolocation is always a must-have to bypass any concealment the enemy might have, plus it has super high duration. And then I'd go for Greater Invisibility. Remember that since we have Extend Spell for free, you can also use your level 4 slots to cast Extended Haste for even more castings of it, or Extended Displacement too. For level 11, as always, improve it Critical and for Shard. So now we have 15 to 20 critical range with a rich weapon, it doesn't get any better than that. Well, unless you had the Gravesinger Axe, but it is not a rich weapon. And then freedom of movement. For level 12, definitely Greater Beast Totem, because this will add pounds to your characters. Then let's get started on our Shattered Defenses package, so weapon focus and for shard. Pick Dimension Door here, just in preparation for chapter 4, as some areas there can only be accessed through Dimension Door and they have missable loot. For level 13, Dazzling Display. Anything you want here. And at last we have level 5 spells, definitely Greater Heroism and also Greater Dispel Magic because we are a spontaneous caster. Any level 2 spell here you want. And the same for level 5 spells, we already have the best ones. Might as well pick Mask Your Light Wounds. Then at level 15, Shatter Defenses at last. And you might as well go for any Rage Power you want here. These ones don't really matter that much. Might as well pick Increased Damage Reduction. And then for your first level 6 spells, I like Mask Cat's Grace because most casters don't have access to this, at least not for the party members I usually pick. And then Brilliant Inspiration, which can help. Not as good as Fortune Hex, but it doesn't have a limitation on uses per character. At level 17, Cleave, and then Combat Trick, Cleaving Finish. We do get this somewhat late, but as a Scald, I really enjoy this feat progression, especially with the extra Rage Powers for a lot more power during the early and mid game. Since remember, your rage affects your whole party. Feats like living finish, well, they only enhance your squad themselves. Then for level 18, lethal accuracy as a rage power. This is one of the best ones in the game and super unique in what it does. It enhances the critical multiplier of your entire party by another times one, which means way more damage on critical hits. You might as well pick overwhelming presence here, if only because it does something even if the enemy saves, so though chances are you won't bother using this. For level 19, you can actually pick any feat you want, because we truly already have the best ones. If you are stacking bites on your character, then perhaps improve at critical and bite. Otherwise, you can pick a skill focus of choice. Honestly, I would just go with toughness, even if the benefit isn't that amazing or anything. Like I said, we already have everything we could want by now. If you didn't go with a human, well, this is where you would pick one of these other feats. Now at last we are at Scald 20, and the Scald Capstone ability Master Scald is actually amazing and certainly worth keeping your Scald pure, especially since your most powerful rage powers, like Lethal Stance and Beast Totem, they do scale only with Scald class levels. But anyways, Master Scald will give your allies a haste effect, which is nice, and it does actually stack with the haste spell as far as extra dodge armor class. Most importantly, it no longer prevents your allies from casting spells or using domain abilities. Alright, now let's give a mythic progression for our Scald party member. As always, if you are on unfair, you might consider less 10 as your first pick, otherwise for hard and below, I'd much rather go with abundant casting. Scalds have amazing level 2 and 3 buffs, most importantly blur, good hope and of course haste. For mythic 2, either mythic power attack or initiative depending on what you picked before. For mythic 3, as always, ever ready especially since we have a very high critical range weapon for shard. For mythic 4, 100% mythic critical and for shard. For mythic 5, I'd pick improved abundant casting, because at this point you already have level 4 spells, even level 5 and you'll soon be getting level 6 too. Some spells at these levels are useful, but if you prefer you can also go for mythic charge earlier. I usually say that if you have a scald pick this, because skulls can provide pounds for your party members. And since we are a scald, well, now's the time. I just read the delayed for later and picking proof of the abundant casting first, but it's a personal choice. For Mythic 6, Mythic Initiative or Power Attack, what you didn't pick before. For Mythic 7, Mythic Charge or Improved Abundant Casting. For Mythic 8, the other extra feats here don't really matter much. I suppose if you went with a race that had racial penalties, 
you could pick Destiny Beyond Birth now. You can of course always pick Flawless Attacks, although I don't think it matters that much at this point. And if you pick Toughness like me, or Mythic Weapon Focus. Otherwise, extra mythic ability, and then you have some choices, always a chance can help, so you won't miss on annoying one rolls. And also favorite meta magic extend, if you want to have extend for free. I'll just go with always a chance, I hate missing on ones. For level 9, well, the same ones I mentioned before. For now, I'll just pick last stand as usual, just in case, especially for the first DLC, inevitable access if you plan on doing that. As for Mythic level 10, you can truly pick anything you want here, based on the choices I gave you before. Use it for a Mythic feat or get a Mythic ability instead, whatever you prefer. Now, if you're wondering about how to build a Scald as your main character, my previous two-handed Scald guide still works just fine. The main difference is that it would go the Trickster Mythic path, right? So at 13, 15 and 17, you would get the special Trickster feats, Improved, Improved Critical and so on, until level 17 the normal feat progression. You can then delay Shattered Defenses for later through bonus Scald feats and skip Cleave and Cleaving Finish. The mythic progression is the same as I've done for so many different Trickster builds. Just remember to get Perception 2 and then actually go for Athletics 3 instead of UMD 3 for the first Greater Mythic trick. Of course, this also requires you to pump your Athletics, so you might as well ignore one of the lore skills either nature or religion, because religion can be left for characters like Sociel, and go all out on athletics. Alright, now let's talk gear for our Scald. For the amulet slot, Amulet of Epic Songs. This is one of the rare gear that actually enhances a Scald or Bard, granting them 6 additional uses of their Bardic performance, which does work for the Scald Song too. Combine it with Lingering Performance, and we have at the very least 18 extra rounds. For armor, as a Scald, you can cast spells while wearing light armor, so at the beginning, chain shirts, later mithril chain shirts. Eternal Ballad is the one I would pick at the end. It is mithril and has a unique effect for bards and Scalds, by preventing your song from being interrupted whenever you are stunned or knocked prone. It's somewhat niche, but it's not like other armors will make much of a difference. Of course, you can also go with the Royal Messenger's chain shirt for the bonus reflex saving throws. For robe and clothing, usually the ones that enhance your lore and knowledge skills, such as the lore master's robe or the blackened rags. But you can always go for cloths of heavy fortification too. For belts, belts that increase strength, later strength and constitution. As you have high critical range, you can also go for the mangling frenzy belt for the extra 4d6 slashing damage on critical hits whenever raging, including Scald Rage. The damage is applied separately to your character, however, so be sure to combine it with the Bane of Spirit Ring, so it won't be absorbed by enemies with high damage reduction like some late-game demons. For gloves, I usually settle for the gloves of the Ambassador, as they grant you a rare plus 5 competence bonus to Knowledge World, and also a plus 2 enhancement to Charisma, which can help early game. If you started with 14 Charisma, this will put you at 16, which is enough to cast all Scald spells. The reason I want my Knowledge World to be enhanced is because my Scald is often the one that cooks for my party during resting. And if you have the latest DLC, The Treasure of the Midnight Isles, you can now get super powerful OP late game recipes even at Chapter 3, such as Conflagrant Taco and Demon Slayer Soup. Taco especially has very high knowledge requirement at around 40, so you'll be glad your Scald has these gloves together with the Bardic Knowledge ability to enhance it even further. For boots, there isn't really any pair of boots that really helps a Scald overall. Boots are kinda lacking in ref pretty much. You can go with anything you want here. I suppose there is something to be said about the boots of Stampede, but only if you have Mythic Charge and decide that you increase your Scald's athletics. For headbands, Actually, at the early game, you definitely want the Hat of Heartening Song. This silly little hat can be found at Scylla's first quest during Chapter 2, and has the very unique property of adding regeneration to all your party members whenever you are raging with your Scald. It even scales based on your level, so it's quite powerful for healing without having to waste potions and spells, especially considering how long you can be raging because of lingering performance, which also enhances this further. You can actually ignore headbands of charisma if you go with the gloves of the ambassador, as 16 is more than enough, unless you want a few more extra spell slots, but we have more than enough through abundant casting. So you might consider other nice helms like Windmaster for a bonus to initiative, Triple Fin for the gore attack, 
And of course, even Shy Lily for the 4 profane bonus to strength, which you can't get otherwise unless you are playing a main character, as you're called. For Google's piercing gaze as usual, for the bonus to damage and attack rolls against demons. And also any outsider, great for the first DLC, inevitable excess. For cloaks, usually the cloaks of resistance with the highest modifier. I have the Call to Violence cloak here, however, which is just a plus 4 resistance, because it is a super helpful item for any party that has a scald. Whenever the wearer is raging, and this works for any of your party members so long as you have a scald with scald song, your whole party will get a plus 2 untyped bonus to attack and damage, which is quite powerful because it stacks with everything else. As I said, you can leave this cloak to any other character. For rings, ring of evasion as usual to avoid mythic demon spellcasters, annoying area of effect spells. Skulls have decent reflex. The other ring slot is up to you, you can go with the ring of imminent demise for the bonus to two-handed attack rolls. There's also the magician's ring, you can find multiple copies of this to increase your use magic device skill checks for the mid game. And also the ring of renowned artisan for the massive boost to knowledge arcana. For braces, Abrupt on slot as usual, for bonus sneak attack, and skulls do have the sense vital spells for that. But you can also go with the braces of breaching, and that's pretty much it, not that many good braces for us. Alright, well, let's cover weapons and quick slots. I went to four shards because of how powerful they are, combining both reach and amazing critical range. Mighty Blow of Good is actually my favorite one, but please remember I already have a guide of the best four shards in the game for complete progression that you can check to the side here or in the pinned comments down below. But anyways, Mighty Blow of Good already has Evil Outsider Bane by default, amazing against any demon, which means you don't have to cast the Crusader's Edge spell on your Scald. Second, if you are good aligned, it grants you a plus 3 bonus damage against non-good creatures. This also works for neutral creatures, so perfect overall for the first DLC. Now I suppose some will ask about the Bearer of Sorrow, I just don't think this is particularly good. <laughs> Unless you were a lich, I absolutely hate the vicious property because it also damages your own character when attacking. And as far as the property of granting you an extra attack for every 5th hit, honestly, by the time you get a 5th hit, the entire enemy pack is dead, even bosses on unfair. Because your scald isn't soloing the game, right? You have other party members too. As far as quick slots, extend and lesser extend broads. To increase the duration of your powerful buffs for free, most importantly, good hope. Haste, Displacement, Greater Invisibility, Greater Heroism, Blur and Sense Vitals. It is true that we also have the Extend Spell feat for free, but with the Rods you actually double the spell slot you have for certain spells, because the Rods, well, if you activate it on a Haste as a level 3 spell, it will be extended. You'll still have your level 4 slots to cast more extended Hastes from the actual meta magic feat. Besides that, early game some of the minor pets to grant you bonus to certain skills. Most importantly, because we have used magic device and decent charisma, some scrolls to support your party, especially divine scrolls like mass heal and heal, and don't forget the highly useful transformation to set your base attack bonus to 20 instead of 15, just like that of a full fighter, for an extra attack and bigger power attack damage boost. You can just have Nanyo scribe, transformation scrolls for you when resting, especially at the Citadel. Otherwise, with the latest DLC, you can just buy them at 99 stacks. As usual, you can also give your Scald a pet to the Bismuth Statuette. I just don't think it's needed because we already have super high reach from our four shard anyways. Now, let me just do a quick section on how to properly efficiently play your Scald. We should move. As I said, all of your supportive abilities should be done outside of battle, before it starts, with of course your buffs, but most importantly when it comes to your inspired rage, here's what you should do. Because the lingering performance ability will last it linger on for 2 rounds after you cease performing, the best way is to, let's say, you spotted an enemy here, by having auto pause when an enemy is spotted on, to pause the game. What you want to do My is immediately activate moves. inspired rage before battle. Then press the letter V on your keyboard, which pauses and unpauses the game in quick succession. What this means is, Inspired Rage has now been activated, you can see from the big aura. And what you want to do now is immediately deactivate it. Since we have Lingering Performance, it's going to last for 3 rounds, enough for pretty much almost all battles in the game. This way you can conserve your Inspired Rage uses, so they last you to the entire dungeon with complete ease. Now, it is true that Scald Rage will also block spellcasting, 
and domain power use for your characters until your scald hits level 20. Here's how to manage that. Usually my characters don't bother casting spells in battle, I just prep off and destroy the enemies by attacking and attacks of opportunity. And as far as domains, I prep buff of them as well. But if you want to use them in battle, remember every single character has the Inspire Rage Accept Effect ability that you can check here by clicking on the Ability tab. Then you can move it to your quick bar. Now it is turned on, which means this character will be affected by Scald Rage. If you turn it off, however, Scald Rage will no longer affect this character, which means they'll still be able to cast spells and so on. So yes, a Scald is still effective even for parties that have spellcasters, because you can just deny Rage with the character you don't want. Well friends, so this was it from my updated Scald guide, especially made for mercenaries. If you found it useful, as always, please remember to like, subscribe, and even consider becoming a channel member, as your support is highly appreciated. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends.